Hey, welcome to Ones and Zeros. My name's Ben, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than some of our previous videos. So I've decided that I'd like to actually start doing a bit of a regular dev blog um, so that we can have a bit of an opportunity to take a look at some of the upcoming videos, some of the things that we have planned moving forward as well as um, being a good opportunity to be able to answer questions and things that people may have moving forward. Now, considering this is the first dev blog, obviously there's not going to be a ton of questions, but we are going to take a good look at some of the different devices and things that we're going to be playing with moving forward in some of our videos, um, as well as some of the things that are happening to the Quartz Art code base behind the scenes in order to make things a little bit better for people that may want to download it from GitHub and have a bit of a mess with it and things like that as well. So first things first, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the new subscribers on YouTube, um, as well as um, a couple of the really nice comments that have been left on Reddit and YouTube as well. That means a lot. It's great to see that people are actually enjoying the content that's being put out. Um, I'd also like to give a bit of a shout out to the STM32 and STM32F4 subreddits as well. Um, there's been really good to see some of the people from those subreddits who have been taking a look at the videos and um, had a, a few more subscribers as a result of that as well. So thank you to, to those communities. Um, and to anyone that's sort of new to this, definitely love it if you took a look at some of our other videos, if you're interested in microcontroller programming and STM32 stuff in general. Um, but as we'll see today, there's a bunch of other stuff that we've got coming up as well that is kind of related, but not necessarily using STM32 devices. So there's a bit of a mix of things coming up. Um, first up, what we might take a bit of a look at is some of the changes that are happening to the Quartz Art code base in order to make things a bit better for people. Um, so let's jump over to this screen. So this is the code for the F4 Nucleo 64 board that we've been messing with in the STM32 Basics videos. Um, and there has been a, a few little changes that will be ongoing, um, not just for this code, but also the code for the F7 Discovery board that is up on GitHub, as well as for the H7 Nucleo 144 boards as well. So anyone that's seen the videos previously has probably noticed that there's not a great deal of comments and things like that. And generally that's the way that I tend to code. Um, however, I'm also understanding that for people that might be new to it or that want to have a bit better of an understanding of the code without having to go back and watch all of the bits and pieces in the videos or try and find a particular bit that's talking about part that they're, they're trying to understand. Um, I have started going through and actually putting a lot more comments through the code to try and give a much better understanding of what different sections of the code are doing, why certain things might be used, and as far as functions and things like that as well, um, to give a bit of a description of what the parameters are that the functions are asking for, why you might use them, as well as what sort of return values you might be expecting as well. So, so far today, I've gone through this particular bit of code, um, commented all of the stuff in main. So as we can see there, a lot of this has a lot more detail in it. Um, also done the setup.hpp. There's not a ton of comments in there, but a few things that I've felt needed to be pointed out have been put in there. I've commented through a bunch of the boot code to give people a bit more of an idea of what we're actually doing when we're going through and setting up certain things. And I'll be doing all of this for the other code bases as well with Quartz Arc. And the other change that I've implemented today as well is there's now a UART manager. So simple, similar to the timer manager that we've been using, that's been part of the timer interrupts, the rotary encoders and PWM videos. Uh, we've now got one of those implemented for the UARTs as well. So especially when we're working with the F7 Discovery and the H7 devices that have six and eight 
UARTs respectively. Um, it's going to make things a lot better, especially when we get more into operating system territory for being able to more dynamically manage what's happening with the particular devices. Um, and I've also gone through and started getting the commenting done for these um, files as well. So I'm going to go through and get all of the commenting done for all of the drivers. Um, and that will happen for all of the drivers and systems that we've been implementing with the F7 Discovery as well. And I'll also, over the coming days and week or so, be looking at getting the external interrupts and all of the timer drivers ported over from the F4 code to the F7 Discovery code and the H7 Nucleo code as well. Um, but there's also a few more devices that we're going to be looking at that are on their way. Um, I have had a little bit of fun doing some shopping lately. So let's take a bit of a look at some of the stuff that we're going to be looking at moving forward and some of the stuff that is on its way to me at the moment that we're going to get to take a look at as well. So let's jump over to this one. So first things first, anyone that's seen the STM32 Basics videos will recognize this guy, which is our STM32 F411 Nucleo 64 board. So there's definitely going to be some more stuff upcoming with this particular board. So want to look at doing some stuff with I2C, SPY, and CAN as well. Um, there's going to be some other stuff coming up as far as using the real-time clock and a bunch of the other peripherals that are included in this particular device. We've also got this guy which is a modified version of the F769i Discovery that we've been messing with in the Discovering STM32 videos. This one's a little bit different to the one that we've been using in those videos because it's got a few bits and pieces which have been bolted onto it so that it's a little bit more like a sort of handheld game console. So we are going to be doing some extra stuff with that. And I realize now on camera, this one's actually really dusty and could do with a good clean. Um, I do have three of these boards um, that I sort of use for different purposes that I've had for a little while. So these have been well used. Um, but coming up, we're going to be finishing off the last episode of the LCD um, code for this one. So part four is going to be looking at how I work with fonts and actually doing text rendering and stuff like that. Moving on from that, we'll also be starting to look at uh, utilizing the touchscreen, things like that. Um, doing drivers to use the onboard flash chip. So it's got a 64 megabyte onboard flash chip that we're going to be using. So a few extra chips that are on the board. So we've got the SD RAM. I think the flash chip's actually hidden up up underneath the screen there somewhere. Um, I'm going to be making use of the SD card, so writing a driver for that one as well. And then for the flash and the SD card, I also want to be taking a look at implementing FATFS. So there's a particular approach that I use for that, so that makes it a lot easier to give us a, a file system. And then, of course, taking a look at audio drivers as well, um, making use of the audio codec that's on this board. And not only do we have analog audio, but we've also got um, digital audio in and out on these boards as well, which I want to take a look at at some stage, along with uh, potentially taking a look at Ethernet at some stage. Although prior to that, we're probably going to be looking at utilizing a ESP32 to act as basically a, a Wi-Fi module for us, as well as... Um, taking on a couple of other duties due to the ESP32s having a decent bit of processing power with them being dual core and I think 240 megahertz. So basically all of the peripherals that we have on this board we are going to touch on at some stage. So that's that one and we're also going to have a look at sort of how we can make use of this to be able to sort of develop some some simple games and stuff like that which is something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. So that's that one. We've also got 
one of my favorite discovery boards, which is this one is an F4 407 discovery board. Um, I like this one because I think it's really good for getting into just generally doing or getting a good grasp of, of working with STM32 devices simply because it's got quite a few different peripherals that you can mess with. So it's got four different user LEDs, it's got a user button, it's got an audio codec as well as an accelerometer. So you can actually do quite a bit of stuff with this one as well as having access to all of the, the pins as well. So you can have a bit of a fun with this one and we will be porting the Quartz Art code base over to this one in coming videos as well. And these ones are fairly cheap and I think the availability on these at the moment is still fairly good as well, unlike some of the other boards given the um, current chip shortage. So that's that one. That will be coming up um, probably starting in the next couple of weeks. We'll start having a look at some of the stuff for that one. We've also got the one that we're, we're taking a look at in the porting code between STM32 devices video that we put up. So this one's a Nucleo H743 uh, nu uh, Nucleo 144 board. That's a bit of a mouthful, um, but this one I really like because it's quite powerful. Um, it's, I think it's 400 or 480 megahertz, um, which is quite a bit of power. It's got a lot of peripherals on board and quite a lot of connectivity. This one, I've got two of these guys and I have modified them slightly with some extra pin headers. So these guys on the outside. Um, which it doesn't come with by default, um, but they were fairly easy to solder on there and that way you get access to absolutely all of the pins on the board. And some of the stuff I want to be looking at doing with this one down the road is using, um, for example, the FMC or the memory controller to interface directly to an FPGA so that we can treat the FPGA basically as additional memory mapped peripherals, which I think will be really cool. Um, and on top of that, as far as the STM32 devices, I do also have some blue pills on the way, which are switch to this one, which are these guys. Um, so these are F1 series devices. And quite simple, they don't come with the ST link on them or anything like that, but that's good because we can have a look at sort of different approaches there as well. As well as the fact that if you've got a Nucleo board, you can actually use the programmer on the Nucleo board to program an external device like this. Um, so we can do that or just program it over serial. So I've got, I think, four of these on the way. Um, and one of which, or possibly two of which, will be getting given away when we hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. So if you want to score yourself a free board, um, shipping and everything will be paid for. and will arrive free of charge right into your hands if you manage to score one of those. So if you're interested in that, definitely help as far as the subscribe account on YouTube. Because um, I will be looking at giving away bits and pieces as we sort of hit each of our milestones both on Twitch and YouTube and Patreon and things like that as well because um, I want to be able to share some of what we're doing with other people and get other people into being able to mess with these things as well and I've also ordered a couple of these devices so these are um, F429 discovery boards these come with a LCD touchscreen on them as well. I believe they also have accelerometer and come with SD RAM, so eight megabytes of SD RAM. And I think those ones are gonna be a bit of fun to play with as well. So we're gonna be having a look at some of those in upcoming videos too. Um, now, aside from STM32, some of the other things that we're going to be taking a look at, switch back to this one, is some of the ESP32 devices that I mentioned. So I've got a few different ones. I've got a bunch of each of these. So 
we've got just the normal ESP32. I'm a bit of a fan of these guys. They're really quite flexible, can do quite a bit with them. Um, they're dual core, 240 megahertz devices. So quite a bit of processing power as well as built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and quite flexible. So we're going to be taking a look at those. We've also got the version with the built in OLED display. And we've also got the ESP32 cam version as well, which has the inbuilt camera as well as the SD card slot as well. So at some point, possibly within the next month, we're going to start having a look at some of those devices. And we're also going to be taking a look at some FPGAs. So... I think the first one that I really started messing around with is this guy, which is a Altera Cyclone 4 device. Um, these are good because they're quite cheap, simply because they're Chinese-made sort of knockoffs of higher quality dev boards. The documentation that didn't come with it is not super helpful. However, I did manage to track down the documents for it, as well as the schematics and things like that. So if you are interested in getting one of these and having trouble with getting hold of the documents, definitely feel free to reach out to me on either Reddit or YouTube or our Gmail address that's up on the screen. So onesandzeros.contact at gmail.com. Um, these do have quite a few really good features that allow you to sort of start getting stuck into doing FPGA development. So you've got SD RAM, it's got VGA serial, you've got a, a beeper, as well as some different buttons and switches and LEDs that you can mess with as well, as well as a full um, set of pins to be able to connect up to a whole bunch of other devices. And quite a, quite a bit of fun to play with. So I'd recommend it's a good place to start if you don't have a lot of money and you want to start messing with FPGAs. It's a, something that we will also have a bit of a look at in our videos moving forward. And other options are also, like this one wasn't um, that expensive either. So this is another Cyclone 4 board. It's basically just the Cyclone 4 chip and the SD RAM. Um, as well as a full set of pins to be able to connect stuff up to. So again, we're going to be having a bit of a look at that in some of the videos coming up as well. Um, however, on top of that, we've also got some of my favorite uh, FPGA development boards that we're going to be taking a look at as well. So this one is a Terrasic DOCV. Um, this one is probably one of my favorite ones so far, simply because it's got quite a lot of features, switches, buttons, a bunch of LEDs and seven segment displays. And the Cyclone 5 chip on here has quite a, a load of logic elements and stuff to be able to mess with, as well as uh, SD cards, PS2 and VGA as well. So you do quite a bit with one of these boards. They are a little bit more pricey. Um, but we're also going to be taking a look at this one in some upcoming videos as well. With the FPGA stuff, we will be starting off just getting into how to get into doing some Verilog HTL programming and, and basically coding up bits and pieces, different peripherals and things like that, as well as integrating some of those with our... STM32 devices, um, which I find quite fun to, to have the combination of the microcontroller and the FPGA. You can do quite a bit with it and it gives a, a really good understanding of using those two different worlds together. Um, stepping up from that, the last device that we're going to take a bit of a look at is also an FPGA, except this one also has a couple of ARM9 um, cores on board as well. I think they're ARM 9s, not ARM 7s, which is another Jurassic board. And this one has a ton of logic elements. I think it's um, 85,000 logic elements or something like that. So you can do quite a lot of FPGA stuff with this. 
and this one you can actually run Linux on the ARM cores and have that interface into the FPGA stuff as well. So this will be coming up a little further in the future with some of the videos that we're going to be looking at. Um, but much like the other Jurassic board, typical buttons and seven segment display switches, LEDs, all that sort of stuff. This one does also have an audio codec as well as composite video in um, and PS2, as well as the USB ports and Ethernet and stuff, which uh, connect to the dual um, cores that are on board with this one as well. So that's a bit of a look at some of the devices that we are going to be looking at over upcoming videos moving forward. Um, if there's anything specific that you'd love for us to sort of take a bit more of a look at or different peripherals on certain devices, different questions, things like that, that you would um, like to have answered, definitely feel free to drop us a message, um, leave a comment on YouTube or Twitch um, jump on to our subreddit, so r slash ones and zeros, which is up on the screen now. It'll be down there somewhere. Um, as well as um, our Gmail address, if you want to contact us that way as well. So ones and zeros dot contact at gmail .com. Um, So that's kind of a bit of an idea of some of the stuff we've got coming up. In the very short term, as far as our STM32 Basics videos, um, the next one that I want to be putting out will be looking at um, some of the basics of analog to digital converters on the STM32. There's quite a bunch of different ways that the ADCs can be used. So we're going to take a look at sort of a simple approach initially. Um, there's probably going to be more videos on ADCs coming out in the future, though, so that we can look at some of the, the other different ways that they can be leveraged. Um, also want to be taking a look at the real-time clock and things like random number generator, um, some of the devices that have a DMA2D as far as doing graphics and stuff like that as well, um, which is something that we'll also be using when we get the new devices that we were looking at before. So these guys, which are on their way to being shipped at the moment. Um, and then, of course, all of the communications devices that I mentioned that we want to take a look at. So I've also got some new CAN transceivers, so we can hook up to as many as four different boards to be messing with CAN to get a really good idea of how that works. And we can use the oscilloscope to be able to um, get a good look at those signals doing the same thing with um, I2C or I squared C, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, with SPY. Um, we can take a bit more of a, a look at UART, which we likely will in future as well, because I'd like to be taking a look at doing things like decoding MIDI signals. I've got a, a really nice MIDI keyboard, which I love hooking up and basically using the STM32s as a synth. So you can do some really cool stuff there. Um, and at some point, we're also going to be looking at sort of using the USB features in the STM32 devices so that we can actually get the STM32 to act as things like a, a keyboard or a mouse or a game controller, things like that. Um, one of the projects that I really want to do there will be actually using one of the F7 Discovery boards to allow me to switch scenes in OBS. Um, so to do that, it's basically going to be acting as if it's a, a keyboard um, so that we can switch between scenes there as well as um, using it to control various things in games and stuff like that by acting as a game controller. So that's some of that stuff. Um, I've already mentioned some of the stuff we're going to be doing for the F7 Discovery series. And I would expect as far as getting into some of the FPGA stuff, probably the next, maybe next week or the week after will be the first video coming out for that stuff. Um, and sort of fitting all of that in around some of the other videos. So I'm kind of aiming to be doing somewhere around four to six or more videos a week, um, depending on how I go time-wise. So again, um, thank you to all of the people that have been watching, leaving cool comments and things like that. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, uh, love it if you followed us on Twitch. 
definitely um, like and subscribe on YouTube, especially if you want to try and get your hands on a free device. Um, and yeah, jump on the subreddit, um, join us there if you want to be able to ask questions and things there. And if you want to help support the channel moving forward, we do also have a Patreon. Um, there is some quite cool benefits for people that join Patreon, including some of the more advanced code that we're going to be doing moving forward, especially when we get into developing the more OS side of things. That's only going to be available to Patreon members. Um, whereas a lot of the lower level stuff that we've been doing, that's still going to stay being available to everyone. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you're having a great day or night or evening, whatever it is, wherever you are in the world. And thanks for watching.